In this series of videos, we are going to walk you through the installation of our new audio systems for the Polaris General side-by-side -side vehicle. So without further ado, let's head on inside and see how it's all done. All right, guys, I am now joined by Brad with our new product development team, and he's going to help walk us through the installation of our Stage 4 audio kit for the Polaris General side-by-side -side vehicle. So, Brad, what all comes in our kit? So, on our Stage 4 kit, we include our PMX source unit, dash kit bracket, our front lower pods and speakers, subwoofer enclosure and subwoofer, amplifier plate amplifier, as long as our rear mini cans and vehicle-specific brackets. Okay, and what's the first thing we need to do to get started? First thing we're going to do is remove the hood and top of the dash. Okay, well, let's see how that's done. All right, now that we have the hood removed, we're going to go ahead and remove the top of the dash. Now the dash itself is held in place with a number of plastic rivets that need to be removed. So to do that, we're going to use a special tool designed for removing those plastic rivets. But of course you may not have this in your toolbox. So a small flat blade screwdriver will also suffice. Just be careful because you don't want to scratch up or mar the plastic when using this. All right guys, so now that we've got that done, we can go ahead and continue the disassembly process. So Brad, what's the next thing we need to take off? The next thing we're gonna do is remove all of our seats, dash panels and center console panels as well. That way it gives us a clear path to install the necessary components. All right, and just as a side note, we're gonna go ahead and take the doors off the vehicle just for video clarity purposes. Now understand in your install, you're not going to need to do this. We just wanna be able to give you guys the best view possible so you can kind of see what we're doing. All right guys, so now that we have the vehicle completely disassembled, we're ready to go ahead and start prepping the components to go in. Now the first up is the subwoofer enclosure. So Brad, what do we need to get the sub enclosure ready to go in the vehicle? So what we're gonna do is load our woofer into the enclosure. Before we stick it in the box, we're gonna need to wire it. Now we send it with a dual two ohm woofer, so we're gonna wire this in series to get a four ohm load for our amplifier. Now, we're using a 404 on this, so ideally four ohm is where you want to be when you bridge it. So we'll wire our two coils in series, basically by taking the positive from one side, the negative from the other, and using the include jumper. Now once you have that in series, you'll use the two remaining wires in the enclosure for the two leftover terminals. And then you'll be able to screw it in and get it all together.
All right guys, so now that we have the subwoofer installed into the enclosure, we're ready to move on to the next step. As a side note, you'll notice we did not install the grill that came with the subwoofer because it's not needed for this installation. So Brad, what's the next thing we need to do for this installation? So the next thing we need to do is mount our two mounting brackets for the enclosure into the car itself. Now our smaller bracket will use an existing hole that is currently filled with a zip tie from the factory. What you're gonna do is cut that, remove it, and then use the supplied hardware to mount the bracket to it. Now we did include a new zip tie that'll fit into the bracket so you can resecure the factory harness. Now on a side note, when mounting your brackets to the vehicle, it's important to know what hardware to use. Now we included two thread cutting screws for the main plate. Now you can tell this by they have a rounded tip. For the smaller bracket, you have a short fastener with a nut that you'll use. The leftover short ones will be for the enclosure and the two long machine screws will be for the enclosure front brackets. Now that we have the plates installed in the vehicle, what's the next step? The next thing we're gonna do is take our subwoofer enclosure, slide it up into the dash, then mount it securely with the included fasteners. All right, so now that we have the subwoofer enclosure mounted to the plates, what's the next thing we need to do? The next thing we can do is take our four channel amplifier and mount it to the amplifier mounting plate that we've already installed. All right guys, so now that we have the sub enclosure and amplifier mounted in the vehicle, ready to move on to the next step, which in this case, Brad, is what? We're gonna go ahead and install our front lower pods. Okay, so the installation process, is there any special procedure or anything we need to make sure we do? Well, with these, you will have to drill three holes. Okay. So we'll have to physically put these in and mark them. So the easy way to tell which one is which is the diamond R on the inside panel will always be in the proper orientation. In other ways, you can always tell the wire pull is up to the top. Now, as you can see, we are curved on the back side. So it's simply just put the pod in against the outside of the vehicle, push it to the firewall, rotate up, and it'll actually fall right into place. You will actually get a stopping point where the pod needs to be. Okay, and once we've aligned it to the proposition, what's the next thing? Next thing we'll do is we'll take our silver Sharpie marker, or if you have a pencil, that'll work as well mark our three holes we need to drill, pull the pod back out, then draw our holes. Okay, and then once the holes are drilled, what's the next thing to prep the pod? At that point, we'll be ready to install our harness into the pod, 
put the sealing tape on it, and then go ahead and mount the pod using the included fasteners. And then once the pod is mounted on the sidewall, we are ready to go ahead and wire the speaker. Yep, we can go ahead and wire the speaker and then run the wires up. All right, at this point, we're ready to move on to the next step, which in this case is what, Brad? We're gonna prep our PMX2 to go into the car. Okay, and what do we need to do to get that done? So we're gonna find our PMX2 uh, adapter bracket and our main general dash kit. From there, we can just slide the two together, mount it with the four screws, then we'll take our PMX source unit, mount that with four screws, and then we'll be ready to set it in the car. Okay, and then once we have this prepped, we're ready to go back to the vehicle, install the center console side trim panel, as well as the dash assembly, and move on from there. All right guys, so before we reinstall the dash assembly, we're gonna go ahead and install our PMX2 radio and dash kit uh, to make it a little bit easier in the end uh, when we go to do the final assembly. So Brad, to be able to put the radio in, I know our dash kit's a two-piece system, so what's the first thing that we actually need to put in to mount the radio? So what we're gonna do is take our included bracket and mount it on the back side of where the factory pocket was. There's actually four bosses already there, and we've included four screws that go ahead and fasten that down. Now we're gonna leave it a little loose, so when we put the radio in, everything has a, an ability to line up. Okay, so once the back plate is in position, then we're gonna take the radio, and how does that mount into the system? So that's just gonna slide through the front, and then there's four more screw spots that'll sandwich it within the dash panel. Okay. Alright guys, so now at this point we're ready to go ahead and start prepping our speaker cans and clamp assemblies to install into the vehicle. So one thing to note, our clamp assemblies when they are shipped are pre-assembled. Uh, but they are pre-assembled with the mounting flange for the speaker can to the outside 
based on the orientation of how the clamp will mount on the roll cage. Now while this is okay, you can certainly disassemble the clamp and actually spin this around to the inside so the can's on the inside of the roll cage. This Brad's going to kind of show you here. Once you pull it apart, you'll notice inside there's actually tabs to help lock the post in place. Slide it out, turn it around, and reassemble. One thing to note is there is a hole on the post for the wire to come out. Now you're always going to want that facing forward towards the cage. Once you have your wire forward, we actually include a zip tie that will slide into the hole and allow you to clamp that down tight. So depending on which way you want to mount your can, just flip the post accordingly to what you need. Now once you turn that, to install this onto the roll cage assembly, it is a two-piece assembly, so you will have to actually have it separated to then bolt it back together once we put it in. Now of course, once the clamp assembly is mounted onto the roll cage assembly, the next thing to do is install the speaker wire itself into the clamp. So, as Brad said, we have the whole assembly at the front of that post. We're going to take the white plug and pass it through and pull a length of cable out the other side. At which point, you will then take the white plug, pass it through the center of the post, at which point you will then connect it to your speaker can assembly using the two pin Molex connector inside the mounting flange area. Once it's connected, you'll feed the cable back through, aligning the speaker can onto the mounting post, and locking it in place with the security torch bolt. Once that's done, you can then pull the excess slack back through, finally positioning it and securing it in place with the zip type Brad mentioned before. Once you have all that done, we've included these badges to conceal the wiring once you're all assembled. From that point, you're simply going to route the wire down the back of the chassis of the vehicle, up through the frame assembly, and forward into the front part. While Rico finishes up on his side of the vehicle, I'm going to show you a quick little tip on the rear cans. They come shipped with a speaker in this orientation. Now obviously we're going to put it on the side and we want it to look a little better. So what you can do is remove the four screws, rotate, and reinsert the screws and tighten them down. This way it looks a little better. Now the other thing we've done is made adjustable badges. It will come standard with a badge that will look normal in this position. And we include a badge that allows you to have it any way you want. So as you spin it, you'll be able to put the badge according to the way you have it mounted. When you do the wiring, on the right side of the vehicle, we have a label. On this end, that says right. On this end, what we've done is put a red dot. That way you know when you get to the back, you'll know which side is the right side. All right guys, so now that we have our rear speaker harnesses ran up into the battery compartment area, we're ready to go ahead and start prepping our main power harness to run forward along with our rear speaker harnesses. Now, you'll notice your power harness also has the audio connection harness attached to it with the remote wire. Now, instead of trying to make you run all of this wire forward, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the remote wire simply by unscrewing it and pulling the wire out. It's going to make it a lot easier to fish this wire up through the center tunnel area, up through the firewall. And then once we're there, we're going to then run it up through the grommet into the hood area and then through the firewall grommet into the dash area where we can get ready to make our final connection.
Okay, we're ready to continue with the rest of the electrical connections. First thing you're going to do is you're going to reconnect the remote turn-on wire that you removed from the power plug earlier to make it easier to run the wire through the vehicle. Once that's done, you will connect the front output plug to the front output of the amplifier. Then locating the front and rear input plugs, you'll connect those to the front and rear input of the amplifier. The RCA plugs will connect to the front and rear RCA output directly off the PMX2 radio. And then you will locate the speaker plugs, and these will connect to the speaker pod cables that we ran earlier. Lastly is the remote turn-on wire that will then connect to the remote turn-on wire found in the PMX2 harness. Now Brad, what other connections on the PMX2 harness do we need to make? So we'll have to make a few more connections, one being the switched power for the PMX2, running through the factory grommets, out under the hood to the factory distribution block. Our ground we made into a T-harness that you'll run down to your cigarette lighter and grab the negative off of there. Once that's done, we'll be able to do the main connection to the PMX2. And then once we have all these connections made, we'll be able to then go back to the battery, connect the power cable and the ground cable at the battery, and then we should be ready to fire the system up and test it and tune it. All right guys, so now that we've made all the final electrical connections, we fired the system up just to make sure everything appears to be working properly, we're ready to go ahead and do the final setup on the amplifier. Now, before we actually dial any of the outputs in and set the radio, we want to set up the switches so they're in the proper position and adjust the crossovers. Now, first thing you'll want to do is you'll find the two-channel, four-channel switch on the amplifier. You'll want to make sure that switch is in the four-channel position since we're using both front and rear RCA inputs. Next to that, you're going to notice the two crossover switches labeled HP, AP, and LP. The front channel switch you're going to want to make sure is in the HP position because they're full-range speakers. The rear channels you want in LP because that's what's driving the subwoofer for the low frequencies. The crossover adjustment dial setting the frequency, both of these you'll want to adjust to approximately 80 hertz. Once those adjustments are made, we're ready to move on to the others. Now you'll notice above the crossovers, the EQ adjustment dials. Now because this is an open air vehicle and we're not going to really gain any benefit from it, we are going to keep the punch EQ controls turned all the way down. Next, we're ready to set up the gain controls, or the output level controls of the amplifier. First thing you want to do is find out at what level does the radio clip. This is indicated on the amplifier by the input clip indicator light. To do this, you can either utilize the test tones that we provide with the amplifier, or you can also use music, typically streamed from a Bluetooth device. In this instance, we're going to utilize music for our application. So you'll start by turning the volume of the radio up, watching the input clip indicator on the amplifier. Once you achieve a volume where the input clip indicator turns red, you'll slowly back the volume down one notch at a time until the light goes out. This is the proper level for setting the amplifier because we are now delivering a fully unclipped signal into it. Once there, you start adjusting the front output level control up until you see the output clip indicator begin to flash blue or even blue-purple depending on the type of music you're using. Next, you'll repeat the same step for the rear output, adjusting its output until you see again the blue or blue-red indicator. Once you've done that, the amplifier is set up and you're ready to move on to the next step. Alright, so that pretty much does it for the amp setup. 
At this point, we're ready to move on to the next step, which in this case is final assembly. We're gonna go ahead and zip tie all our wires up to make sure they don't catch anything in motion. Then we can go ahead and assemble all the pins. All right, well, let's get to it and get this thing back out on the road. All right guys, that pretty much wraps it up for this install. So as you can see, it was pretty easy and straightforward to do. So Brad, is there anything you'd like to add before we cut out of here? Well, as always, if you have any questions before, during, or after the install, give us a call. We'll be more than happy to help you out. And as always, make sure you check out our website for more information on all the products we manufacture. And of course, check out the YouTube channel for more installation videos. Well, that wraps it up for us on this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again in another video.